another little denim delivery for the channel tonight. Um, as you can tell from this box, something from Benzac. Uh, if you haven't heard of Benzac before, this is a European brand um, set up to offer a sort of more Western cut uh, in competition to the traditional Japanese brands you'll find out there, but still maintaining the same qualities and actually adding a couple more of their own little tricks um, to make the best product possible. Um, so in this box, I've got a pair of their B01 slim jeans and one of their um, BS, BLS01 um, baseball t-shirts. So in the box, obviously there's packing slips, there's a nice little poster actually here, um, which I might need to get up on the wall of the studio. Something a bit more interesting for the backdrop there. Um, so a nice little Benzac poster, a baseball t-shirt, and as I say, a pair of their slim jeans. So, I think we'd better get these out and take a look. Um, the baseball t-shirt I've got in a size medium, and the jeans, their 31 inch tag size on the waist there. So let's pop these out and take jeans. a look at them. Um, the first thing that comes to mind with these is absolutely how crisp and starchy they are. Um, they're going to be an absolute wonder to uh, break in. Now for me, I always wonder about the, uh, the starchiness of new jeans. Um, obviously it helps you create those sort of crisp uh, creases and honeycombs and how it helps the fading process. Um, but I do find or I do believe that the, the starch left in the product long term can be problematic. So I get lots of wear and tear on the rear of my knees. The whole world gets uh, problems with uh, blowout on the crotch if they're not washing their jeans regularly. Um, so what I like to do with a well starched pair of jeans is indeed keep them raw initially, um, but then probably sort of after about three months, I'll do a cold water soak just to take out any uh, remaining starch, just the general sort of dust and debris of day-to-day -day life, um, just to give the fibers that little bit of a fighting chance. Because what you get with the, uh, with the fibres is that the dirt in between them acts as a sort of abrasive and that's what causes blight. So well starched jeans, my trick, what I do, um, start off with them starched, then after about three months give them wash through. That's just me, I'm sure you'll all have different ways of doing it. So as I say, these are a European brand. Um, this is uh, Benzac who are based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Now they started back in 2013 um, with Japanese uh, made garments to their design. As I say, they're going for a more Western fit uh, with a few little nuances of their own, which we'll go over in some close-ups in a minute. Um, in 2016, they started European production, um, that being um, in workshops in Portugal, and still maintain the same quality of construction, the same quality of fabric. So this is a Japanese uh, salvage denim, 15 and a half ounces from the collect mills uh, and yeah made in Portugal made in Euro Europe and obviously they still offer a Japanese made product but uh, bringing some manufacture and bring maintain those skills in Europe is a great thing um, so just looking over the jeans here um, it is a slim cut now I've gone for a 31 inch waist um, and that actually in real measurements, if we go through the measurements on this pair of jeans comes out at just over uh, 33 inches. So I like to have a 34 inch waist, um, but I do believe that a good pair of den is one that you have to break in and stretch to fit. Um, I find that if it's pretty much comfortable from the get go, it just won't look that great in the long term. So go an inch small, thereabouts on the waist and you'll break them in. Um, certainly this sort of denim I understand stretches out about an inch. Some denims uh, stretch out a bit more. Uh, the recent uh, review I did on Oni's uh, secret denim, they stretch out loads, um, probably more than I, well certainly more than I expected, probably a bit too more, much for the size that I picked. So that's a little bit of a follow up on them. Um, so waist is bang on for me. Um, these will stretch in over the next couple of weeks as I break them in and they'll fit perfectly, I think. Um, one thing I did know, notice is on Benzac's uh, website, they give another way of measuring the waist um, and they sort of go at a sort of three quarter sort of flat uh, twist and it just allows, allows a whole waist 
to lay down nice and flat, which is really useful. So the top block is nice and comfortable, nice and figure hugging. Um, a little bit of that comes down to a little secret trick they've got in the waistband there. Um, it is actually two part and it's a curved construction. We'll look at that in a, in a minute in the close ups, but the top box is nice and comfortable. The front rise is 10 and a half inches on these jeans. The rear is around about 15. Then it becomes nice and slim on the leg. The thighs are around about 12 inches. Going down to the knee, measured 13 inches below the, the crotch there, and that's about eight inch, and then down to around about seven inches on the, hem, uh, on the hem. So nice and slim, uh, slight taper from the knee there. And the inseam is 34 and about a quarter there. Um, now for me, 34 is a sweet spot. Um, it allows me to cuff without the jeans becoming too short, and it also allows options to, uh, to stack. So 34 is pretty much bang on for me. Um, it's always a bit of a chore to actually get these jeans, or any jeans, hemmed. Um, so it's nice to be able to pick up a pair which are just at that sweet spot. Um, they don't offer different uh, inseam sizes, so uh, it varies, I think, between the different waist sides. It goes up proportionally, but uh, something to bear in mind. But 34, for the average size chap, um, offers the options of stacking or indeed cuffs. So for me, um, just moving on to some fit shots on these, um, my intentions are probably to wear these casually, so it will be cuffed, um, boots or trainers, um, but with stacking, I think I could probably just get away with sort of smart casual office wear, probably with a nice pair of brown broke boots. I think that'd probably look quite nice. So we'll probably be giving that a little bit of a try and allowing me just to get a bit more denim into my life. Okay, so we'll move in for some close-ups and take a look at some of the details of this Into pair of jeans. jeans and a little bit of detail here. Um, the first thing that strikes me is the um, the branding. I do like branding my jeans, my boots. I like something to read. Um, I like the sort of graphic design. It's just something I like. Some people don't find that important at all, but for me, it's part of the buying experience. So really nice to see a completely different mechanism of, of communicating on the rear patch here. A nice fabric um, hang tag, a couple of stitches through, nice sort of stylized image of a, a guy enjoying his denim and the details of the jeans. Thought that was really nice. Um, and then the, the hang tag, a cowhide um, patch on the back there with the model number. So that's going to hang uh, below your belt, so the belt doesn't go behind it, it goes in front of it. Now this is pretty uh, raw leather, um, it will pick up some patina over time. I'm wondering whether I might treat this skin with because um, when you're exposing leather to indigo it can pick up lots of uh, random blues and stuff, so if you treat it to begin with you'll have some control over uh, the colours it picks up, but each their own. Um, Little details on the back pocket here. There's no arcs on these back pockets at all, um, but there is this sort of steers head cowboy style here in the uh, contrast, or in fact, not contrast st stitching, navy blue stitching, and then you've got bar tacks in the same stitch. Now, what I understand is this is actually indigo dyed stitching, so this will fade as well, so this won't be popping out whilst everything else fades. This will have its own fading characteristics, which I think is quite interesting. Moving on to the other side, you can see these pockets aren't lined, but they're, they're plenty thick enough, plenty heavy enough. Nice um, shallow profile just to give it a nice contemporary look. Sometimes pockets come down a little bit too far, um, but I think they've got it pretty much bang on to the jeans here. This is where there's some really interesting stuff to see. Um, so one of the things which is particularly interesting about these jeans is their sixth pocket. So traditionally you'd call this the fifth pocket. Um, interestingly enough, I had a little email exchange with uh, Leonard Nye, who, uh, sorry, I've, got, I've mispronounced your name, but Leonard, um, who um, developed Penzac. And I asked him, are you the only, uh, by email I asked him whether he was the only sort of manufacturer to utilize this pocket style. And he said yes, and this was his own invention. And it picked up on the tradition of the, the jean being a practical day-to-day -day trouser for cowboys um, and the need for storage, which brought about the 
the five pocket configuration in the in the history of the uh, of the denim jean. But his point was that the fifth pocket wasn't actually this pocket. This was not the fifth pocket to come into existence. It was actually the second rear pocket, which um, developed over time. So that was an interesting little bit of denim trivia, which I thought was really interesting. Um, now this pocket is plenty big enough for a mobile phone, a very slim wallet, some keys, bits and bobs. So a really practical uh, addition. Nice bit of salvage detail there. Be slightly tucked away under your belt line, so that will make this all that little bit more subtle. And indeed, that pocket will probably become uh, completely hidden if you're wearing these with belts. On the traditionally called fifth pocket, um, I know that's debatable, but uh, nice little salvage detail there. And a full button fly with a nice little Benzac tab there with the, uh, the waist size. Now a lot of brands sneak in a little bit of selvage on the insides here, but what we've got here is actually a lovely, lovely, very dense uh, chain stitch, really consistent uh, sort of pitch of stitching along there. You've got the BDD branded rivets and buttons on the opposite side. The rivets aren't actually bearing branding on the front, but they are on the rear. Which is quite nice. Nice thick pocket liners there. And the stitching on the yoke construction there. And then you see the nice curved waistband which helps that comfortable fit and a little bit of BDD branding on the rear side of the K-Hide patch. Moving down jeans, you've got a nice slim taper from the knee down and then on the hems here you've got the selvage detail, nice chain stitch on the, on the hem there but nice selvage detail with the sort of standard um, white, red, white configuration there. Again on the front here, the bar tack stitching is in the indigo dyed um, yarn, so there'll be some interesting stuff as that fades potentially back down to white with wear along with the surrounding denim. As I say, really nice starchy denim, very crisp, nice dense indigo colour. Just moving on to the uh, baseball shirt. Um, as I say, this is the BLS01, I've picked it in medium. Um, so this is a really nice, heavy uh, jersey material. Um, slight off-white colouring with the, uh, the raglan style sleeves and a deep, dark, navy dye. Um, first time I've actually had this style of shirt, I've always wanted to try it out. Um, my understanding is that the raglan sleeves allows for a nice uh, fit and a lot of flexibility in the, in the arm. Um, the cuffs are simple, uh, single stitched with a nice chain stitch over them. And the BDD, Benzac Denim Development um, logo there is nicely chain stitched to keep the sort of the heritage of the uh, the denim brand there. Just a little close-up shot of the t-shirt here, or baseball shirt. Nice chain stitch letters on the, the BDD branding. Nice off-white heavy jersey. Quite a nice texture. And the dark navy raglan sleeves. Just quality stitching throughout, nice branding at the top Those there. are the Benzac um, B01 Slim Jeans and their baseball t-shirt. Um, I'll be putting these into use. Um, I will provide some update shots and uh, a update video probably after about six months wear and see how these are developing. Um, at 15 ounces, these are ideal as we move into summer. Um, I do like a heavy denim, but 
you can't wear 21 ounces all year round, even in the UK. So 15 ounces or 15 and a half ounces are perfect denim. Most people find that good all year round. It's plenty warm enough and it's nice and breathable for summer months. Um, so I'll be providing some update shots. Now, one thing to note is that uh, Benzac uh, celebrated their probably the, probably their first five years of, uh, of business uh, a year or so ago, and they ran a uh, denim fade competition. They use this cut, they use this, um, this denim. So there's plenty of shots of how this matures if you can't wait for me to show you what I get this to do in the next sort of six months or so. Um, as I say, I'm going to try and get this into office circulation if it, if it works with some brogues, and uh, that will hopefully speed up their evolution. Um, I'll put a link below to uh, Benzac's website. Um, check them out, I found them on Instagram. Always nice to find a European company. Um, Japanese companies do some fantastic salvage, but it's nice to see some homegrown talent, or at least talent a little bit nearer home at least. Um, if you haven't seen my channel before, please check it out. Um, love denim, absolutely obsessed by it, and quality footwear, red wings, thoroughgoods, um, that sort of thing. Um, everyday carry, fountain pens, pen knives, and really any sort of hobbies that sort of pass my way, I like to share on my channel here. So check it out, you might find that we've got some other common interests. Uh, love that you subscribed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you for the next one. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.